Welcome to Stillworks Room Brewing. My name is Randy. Uh, this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. Today what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project, the gin project. Okay, I do like gin. Uh, but first things first, I would like to send out a uh, congrats to Jesse at Stillit for reaching uh, 50,000 subs. Hey, way to go, Jesse. You know, without everyone's support, we all can't survive. So with that being said, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so, so far. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Share us with your friends, get the word out. And if you want to, leave a comment below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Okay, so a little bit of uh, information. Uh, gin is a, is a neutral spirit and it's distilled with mainly juniper berries and some other uh, botanicals. Uh, so there's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, you can put the botanicals right in the uh, still pot. You can make, make a uh, uh, concentrated, you know, if you take some, let's say some uh, 40 proof spirits, put in your juniper berries and whatever else you want, you know, let it soak in that for a, you know, for a day and then put it right into your, uh, you know, your just, uh, distilled pot. And you could do it that way, or you can add the botanicals afterwards into the spirit, uh, but that will leave a, a, a small tint to the spirit. And a lot of people like their gin clear, and I, I also like mine clear. Or the way that I like to do it, I like to put all my stuff, juniper berries and other spices and all that I put in, I put it right into like, I got a sight glass on my still and I use it as a gin basket, and as I distill up through that to get the flavor over. Okay, so there's a lot of different uh, styles of gin. Uh, you, you do a little research on that. Uh, the one I'm gonna be making is, some people call it either a American gin or a West Coast because it has a lot of botanicals in it. I'll be putting a lot in there, and we'll get into that on the next video because I know this video is going to, this is going to take at least a couple videos to get done so we'll do that on the next one all right so let's get started okay I did put a little bit of hot water in my mash tongue just to help heat it up a little bit uh, and I also uh, sanitized it okay so what I want to do is I want to add I got some hot water up to about 175 degrees because I know when I drop my grain into my mash tun, it's going to bring it down. Uh, so let me go ahead and put in about, uh, I don't know, about three gallons of water. Here's my spoon. I want, I want to make sure that everything is sanitized. Because unlike beer, this won't be boiled. So we're going to sanitize everything right now, okay? So what we got here is 20 pounds of two-row. Let me get a little bit of that mixed in. Uh, if you notice, I use a pump to pump my water around. And if I have to, I will uh, add a little cold water. I can always add a little cold water to bring the temperature back down, but I don't think I'll need to. I mean, this point here is just, just like making beer. So I don't know if a lot of distillers out there come from the home brewing or they like to do both. I mean, particularly that's what I like is I like to do both. Kind of 
kind of want to make sure we don't get no dough balls. Starting to get a little thick. temperature we're looking for is somewhere between 145 and 155. All right, so let's see what we got. Oop. Sanitize. That's why it's great to always have a uh, spray bottle with sanitizer in handy because you'll use it all the time. It's still climbing up to 140. Uh, I'm gonna just put a little more hot water in it. It's about 150. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it up to 155. I like to get to near the top of the scale because the temperature's always going to come down. Coming on up. There's 150 and 150, 150, 155, 156. I think that's going to be perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do, we'll close that up, we'll close that up, and we're going to let that sit, I'm going to let it sit for about an hour and a half, uh, and to let the uh, enzymes inside that two row convert all the starches over into uh, fermentable sugars. Uh, gin. Yeah, you can make it pretty much out of uh, anything that you can ferment. You can, you know, ferment out of table sugar, corn sugar, uh, grains, just about anything. Uh, I normally use a sugar wash for uh, gin and vodka, but I wanted to try a, uh, a, a grain wash, or, you know, grain mash, I guess. Uh, so I, I do have 20 pounds of grain in there. Uh, and we'll see what that comes out. That should come out, I'm thinking, if I did the math right, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 1.075 is what I'm thinking. Okay. So, let's just give it some time to do its thing. Uh, and then, then we'll be back. We'll be almost done for today. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half. I think what I'd like to do is get a little sample.
I'm gonna get a little sample and try some iodine. Okay, I want to show this to you. I put a sample in there. I put a couple drops of iodine in it, and it's no black. It more or less turned. See, there's no black. No black. It just turned kind of a pukey brown. Okay, so that means. That means the uh, conversion did take place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start draining. I'm going to do a bar, uh, batch sparge. Let this all drain out. I'm gonna put some hot water in there and then flush her out again. So we packed up about six gallons. All right, so I'll get this finished sparged up and I'll be back. Twelve hours later, never get tired of seeing that. Fermentation is well on its way. <laughs>